Thank you for joining War Widows New South Wales as we celebrate International Women's Day 2022. We have a few questions to ask you to get to know you a little bit more. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> it's great to have you. You have connected an amazing community of military spouses to each other through your podcast and online forums. Can you tell us a bit about how you came to form your military life community? I've been a defence partner for 20 years this year and it wasn't until about 10 years into that that I found community and connection and with people who just got it. And so for 10 years, I felt like I didn't really fit anywhere, like no one understood me or the ups and downs of defence life or, or my life. And, and that was a really lonely place to be. Um, so when I finally found my place with other defence partners, I felt like this weight had been lifted um, and that with others by my side, I could continue to live defence life and share the celebrations and the challenges with others who just got it. So I started the Military Life podcast and the community because I wanted every defence partner to feel that connection and to find that community from anywhere in Australia, I wanted them to have what I had found. The impacts of service in the Australian Defence Force can affect women in a much different way to men in terms of career and finances, for example. And many, just like yourself, have established businesses while living the military life. What has it been like for you as a defence spouse managing your own career and your family? Managing career and family isn't easy when you're a partner of someone who is in defence. Even when you don't have children, it can be a struggle because there is so much uncertainty and a lot is out of your control due to the nature of defence life and the requirements of the defence member's job. So sometimes it comes down to taking a different path to get to the career destination in mind or sometimes it means pivoting in a way that you hadn't considered and other times it just means I guess doing the best you can at the time while wearing all the hats because um, you know, we, we do all the things at times when the defence member isn't there and we have to, to juggle everything and career and home and, and all that comes with, you know, living defence life solo. But there is a lot of defence partners have to contend with when it comes to career because often sometimes we can be underemployed when we've moved to a location where we can't find employment um, in the field that we're trained in or can't find employment at all. Um, sometimes there are no childcare options to suit the defence lifestyle. So that obviously impacts career and um, the progressing in the field that we, we may want to progress in. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of the time we have to, we have to count the defence member out a lot of the time. So we are flying solo um, when it comes to uh, career and kids and, and managing it all. And, and then also the domestic duties um, thrown in there. So moving frequently also means that we leave jobs um, before we may want to leave that job. Um, and then gaps in employment, gaps in super, gaps in long service leave, that's a rarity. So it, career and, and family and managing it alongside defence life is tricky, but we just do the best we can. And a lot of the time we are very amazing at it. So we just, yeah, to do the best we can. I've learned that what is meant for you is meant for you. And just because you're taking a different path doesn't mean you won't get to where you want to go. I've learned to be adaptable, uh, to put myself out there and, and to kind of put yourself out there probably quicker than what you would be comfortable with. Because sometimes when you move to a new location, you kind of have to get the ball rolling with putting yourself out there and building those connections and those networks because in two years time you might be gone again kind of thing so you kind of have to like be on top of that um I've also learned to do all the things I've learned to start a lawnmower I've learned to ask for help I've learned how to renovate a laundry <laughs> um so and I often say if you want something done ask a spouse because we can usually figure out a way to get whatever it is that needs to be done done <laughs> What bias have you had to manage as a woman in your life and career and within the defence and veteran sector? There are a couple when it comes to living defence life um, and when it comes to career and, and just in general. The stereotype narrative that defence partners follow the defence member from post to post and are just in the background holding down the home front 
Yes, we are holding down the home front, but we are also educated, capable and driven individuals who have goals and aspirations and careers. We are so much more than the person waving goodbye to a defence member or counting down the days for that defence member to come home. Um, we are amazing people. We're organised, we're innovative, we're adaptable, we're doctors, we're lawyers, we're teachers and business owners. We, we are also, and it just happens to be that we're also someone who loves and supports a defence member uh, and someone who's serving their country. Um, another unspoken bias when it comes to employment is that because defence partners move frequently, that we are somehow a less committed employee or because we have gaps in our employment or a variety of jobs on our, our resume, we're less qualified when really it's the opposite. Like we can offer a variety of skills and experience, which only enhances our ability and brings an awesome dynamic to a workplace. Hiring someone who isn't a defense partner doesn't guarantee that that employee will stay any longer in a role than a defense partner would, um, who is posted to a location for two or three years. And and now that um, there's more work from home and remote options uh, when it comes to work because of COVID, unfortunately, because of COVID, it actually means that if there is an option to take our job with us, then more than likely that defence partner is going to give you, you know, as many years as they can in that role because they want to stay in meaningful employment um, if they can. So having that option. But when it comes to bias and defence partners, it's all about changing that narrative about that, that employers and the wider community have about us and educating them about who we really are. It's really about turning that narrative around and, and I guess showing employers and the, the wider community who a defence partner is in 2022.